What's good, Homo Squad? It's your boy, Homo Ziggy. We back here with another reaction. So, we here with another Luesta video, and this one is titled, Where Are Rap Snitches Now? Basically, where we know that when it comes to rappers and such, you always hear the stigma and such, no snitching and all that. But to me, it's basically like this. At the end of the day, all I feel like is with with nowadays the street code shit. Let's face it, that's null and void right now. To honest to me and many others who think like me and such, I could be wrong and all. But look, at the end of the day, all this thing about being tough and whatnot, I'ma street this that and such, no snitching and all that, motherfucker. At the end of the day. At that stage when you're growing up and such, you're gonna be like that. But when you grow up, when you're like young, when you're now like mature and such, and you're actually an adult adult, you're gonna realize that shit was, that shit was never gonna last. That's how I feel. So, hey, let's see how the waste let's see how much of the rap snitchers, rap snitches, are doing now and such according to the waste so we better check this out make sure you like comment and subscribe follow me on all my socials up there and without further ado let's dive on in there's not many things worse that you can do for a rapper's career than to be caught telling in a genre that's so intertwined with street code fans are quick to write off anyone who is discovered to be an informant and not living up to their lyrics about being a real og who stands 10 toes down even if some of those listeners have only seen the hood from a telescope in the suburbs they still aren't willing to listen to a rat yeah which but is crazy like that's another crazy thing too like if nigga Yo, hold on this because like basically why are you what who says you need to who are you to judge somebody in search because at the end of the day for all we know you could be a rat too so yeah in the hood from a telescope in the suburbs they still aren't willing to listen to a rat but what happens after these allegations surface and is there any way back from it my name is Luesta, and today we're gonna discuss what happens to rappers after they snitch and if we're talking about rappers who turned into rats we might as well start with yep, one of the most one. notorious examples takashi yeah. 69 after a few years of trying to make it, a young Daniel Hernandez had an idea for how he wanted his new video for his track Gummo to look. Now that he was rhyming with a harder edge to his lyrics, he needed some credentials to back it up. And as he was never a gang member, he found it through hiring the infamous 9 Trey gangs to appear in his video. Once this formula worked, 6 9 kept running with the gang and became a member. But, but like, rather to me, and look, let's face it, even though 9 times out of 10, we all knew that this nigga really wasn't living about that life the music himself the music itself be hey we can totally be honest all of us was bumped back in 2017 2018 almost all of us was listening to him at a time even if he wasn't saying shit even if we even if it was trash or whatnot which it is let's be honest at that time everybody was bumping it and such bumping gummo freaking gaddy gaddy and all that so yeah we can it's basically like this for all who say i could never listen to a rat and all that look at the at the at one point we all was listening to six nine so i won't hear it edge to his lyrics he needed some credentials to back it up and as he was never a gang member he found it through hiring the infamous nine tray gangsta bloods to appear in his video once this formula worked six nine kept running with the gang and became a member but rather than having to do dirt in the streets takashi who was now racking up a gang of billboard hits had one job for the gang he simply had to keep making hits and giving financial support to the gang as well as equipping them with guns so that he can get credibility and protection is in return styled as the self-appointed king of new york takashi provoked everyone to try and beef with him and when he had the protection of the gang he could do crazy things like the time he showed up to o block in the middle of the night since he knew yeah, that his brother this is when right then and there six nine became such a he's not even it's not about even him being a snitch no more at this point people hated him because people was hating on him now because he was doing this shit where 
nigga, you're going on to people's grave, like going into people, basically trolling and such, trolling the dead and whatnot, and like he said, just starting beefs with people where you didn't have a beef with them in the first place, or they don't even know about you in the first place. New York, Takashi provoked everyone to try and beef with him. And when he had the protection of the gang, he could do crazy things like the time he showed up to O Block in the middle of the night since he knew that his brothers in the 9th tray would have his back. O Block right here? I should call this shit No Block. It's 10 o'clock. Where the fuck y'all niggas at? All the while, he was becoming a huge star, collaborating with the likes of Nicki Minaj, Tory Lanez, and even Kanye West. But in November of 2018, Takashi's world yep. came crashing down. After he was arrested alongside the Nine Trey Gangster Bloods on RICO charges, it was here where Takashi was now facing 32 years in jail. Now, he had to decide, does he want to really stick with the tough image and do his time, or should he just work it out with the cops to get a lighter sentence? Well, he found out what he was going to do the first night he was locked up. First night, I got locked up, I watched Lone Survivor, and I was like, definitely, I'm definitely snitching, right? And then, and then, no, seriously, I was So like, from the job! No, yeah. <laughs> After all of that posturing, 6 9 was going to be out in a matter of months, but no one could understand how that would work. But when he first re-emerged, it seemed like he was about to pick right back up where he left off as he broke yeah. the Instagram live viewing record in his first public appearance. However, when it came time for Takashi to drop music, his sales literally halved. And rather than acknowledge it, he lashed out on the charts and claimed that he was being blackballed by the industry while other rappers were doing dirty true. work behind the scenes, such as buying the number true. one singles. Although, it was really clear that the fan base wasn't really buying it. 6 9 numbers don't lie. Also 6 9 the Billboard numbers <laughs> are wrong. As yeah, most hip hop like, nigga talking about buying numbers and such. Like, my nigga. Really? In space like this, you think people are actually watching you because you're that fire as a rapper and as an artist? No, nigga. The only reason why people would ever was listening to you or reacting to you wise was because, let's be honest, you bring in the numbers. Don't, I ain't, I ain't lying. But we were mostly what, for me, I wasn't reacting to him at all because at the time, it was whatever because I didn't even know him. Like, come on now. My channel, one, my channel wasn't that big, well, still it is not that big to me, and two, ain't nobody going, nobody was going to take him that serious no more, because that whole gangster image he had before, especially when he snitched afterwards, long and gone. So, anything... Numbers don't lie. So anytime also when he's the talking the tough... The numbers are wrong. As most of hip-hop rejected him, he's been shot bail from the likes of Akon, who basically said that this was more commonplace than people made it out to be. In jail, 80% of the motherfuckers that's locked up right now are all cooperating True. with the police. There's more snitches in jail than there are so-called real niggas. I mean, hey, be honest. Wait a lot. Be honest. If you need to tell me right of this moment... That ain't there's no snitches in jail. Y'all is lying as a motherfucker. Everybody in that motherfucker done cooperated. If they can get Reduce. time less the amount they was given, they ain't telling my nigga. Come on now. Imagine that. You say if you're given 10 years, right? To and you are going to jail for 10 years. Nigga, if you cooperate the police, you could get five. You can have a your sentence from a 10 to a 5, from a 32 to a 16, or even just coming out straight up. So who, so you need to tell me, you wouldn't want to, man, come on now. You need to tell me that none of y'all niggas ain't going to want to get, take, take a less time sentence. <laughs> yeah, y'all want to stick to y'all code and all that, okay. Hey. If you say you're a real nigga, go ahead, be my guest. But trust me, nigga, a lot of motherfuckers would want to take that sentence. Don't care what you talking about. Get time less the amount they was given. 
they telling my nigga. Even though he became accustomed to raking in tons of cash from concerts and hit songs, Takashi ended up filing for bankruptcy in May of 2022. In the paperwork, 6 ix 9 said, Right now, I'm struggling to make ends meet. I do not know if I will ever command the kind of advances I was paid before my arrest, and my career stalled. If the court awards the compensatory and punitive damages sought by the plaintiffs at this inquest, it will surely bankrupt me in a way which I will never recover to the permanent detriment of the family members who rely upon me. After trying to make a Latin album without even hitting the charts, Takashi is basically just living on an infamy. From getting jumped in a gym to being arrested in the Dominican Republic on domestic violence charges, the headlines are about everything other than the music Which is days. crazy. But as Steve will do it from the Nelk Boys found out, he's still out here scamming people. I am mad about that. It's alright, it's fine. I got him a deal, right? Huh? To play video games. The Rumble? Once a week. Huh? For an hour. Damn. Two million up front, and he just doesn't do it. It's crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty much that simple. It, but it, it's the fact that he, he had no money at the time, and he needed money to fucking, uh, he breaks up with his <clears> girlfriend, <throat> and he needs money. And like, dude, you see these videos of him giving away money and stuff? It's never his money. It's like, when he gives his mom a car, it's, it's him buying himself a car. He's like, not a nice person. After all that's been said and done, Takashi has gone from telling people to test his gangsta to being the poster boy for how falsified the culture can be by people like Logic. It's very evident, right? I'm not talking shit, I'm just saying that he puts on this, this, this character, especially if you judge based off what he said in court. I ain't start, trying to fucking start beef with 6ix9ine. I'm just using an example <laughs> that there are some rappers out there that are more a persona. a persona and a personification. And because of that, when people shit on their music, or shit on them, it doesn't matter because they're not really portraying who they are on the record. Although his career is in a horrible state as of right now, at least 6ix9ine had a lengthy time I at guess. the top. Well, for Spot oh, yeah, and Bottom, his snitching allegations were so bad that rappers like Lil Durk literally refunded him $100,000 for a verse he did. Just if, that ain't, if that ain't a bitch, you ain't here to tell me that that is I I never thought a rapper would do that. So he snitched so bad that you got he refunded him a hundred k for a verse he did. That's crazy. That is crazy. The top. Well, for Spot on Gotham, his snitching allegations were so bad that rappers like Lil Durk literally refunded him a hundred thousand dollars for a verse he did just because he didn't want to be affiliated with. That's him crazy. Anymore. Back in 2020, you couldn't escape Spot on Gotham's breakout hit B. Yeah, that one. Considering it got remixed by basically half of the industry. Nigga, what, m boy? That beatbox? Hell, there was even variations of that beat and such from people who was doing it. Sorry, all I had to look, cause you know what, who always show up, even though I locked the door. But yeah. You, you, it's basically like this. Was it, what, 2020 or 2021? Either way, from that year when he came out with the song Beatbox, you cannot escape that song. Every rapper was remixing that bitch for me, as you saw, like the likes of Enelie Chopper, The Baby, freaking, who else? Like, nigga, people that you knew, pe certain rappers that you love and such, they was remixing that. Hell out of that beat. Autumn Gotham's breakout hit beatbox. Like Considering baby. it got remixed by basically half of the industry, it made it seem like this Florida yeah, rapper was had a on promising it. and successful career ahead of him. However, when news surfaced that he didn't even stutter in snitching on one of his own friends started emerging by media outlets, it really brought Damn. his whole thing down. Basically, the story is this. In June of 2020, Spottom Gotham was caught with guns and marijuana at a Florida residence alongside YNR Mookie. Once the cops showed up, Spottom hastily gave his homie up, with claims that he was asleep when the cops initially arrived, and that Mookie was freaking out because he had a weapon on him. The facts are, Spottom told the police Dang. he saw Mookie with a gun and hinted that Dang. some pills weren't his, leading to Mookie's arrest while Spottom got him got to leave. Ultimately, Mookie beat the case because the cops didn't file the right paperwork. While for Spottom got him, it was time for damage control. They're saying you're, you snitched on YNR Mookie and there's a lot of noise out yeah. there about it, papers been leaked and all that, allegations flying around. What's your side of the story? Just let's set the record straight. Nah, me and Mookie, we talked 
That's it's some old shit. I don't know. Like I never seen, I never seen it, but I seen it on the internet. I guess the police put whatever the allegations they put. But me and Mookie, we we cool. That's my brother. I don't know how I got on the internet. Police put that shit up. There, I mean, there's like we like I said, and drop, and we both went to jail. For like 21 days for it got out and it was like it was nothing after that i never heard to make matters worse even well-known enemies like fulio and young Ian ace could all agree on one thing and that's the fact that the beatbox rapper was a rat man Gamma, this is a this is told on his homeboy i never told him no i had homeboy telling on me i know how that feel i never tell him no on with you boy try it Try as he might. In a way, to me, I feel like that's that's why I say that sometimes with the street shit. Like, bro, you need it. It's just look. At the end of the day, I just don't get it. But hey, you want to live your life like that? Be my guest. His career has never been the same since. And these days, he's predominantly in the news for all the wrong reasons. Like the time he got shot and arrested. If all that didn't happen, things could have been so much you know different. So, and you know what's so crazy? I have never said this before in my react in many years and such. But I remember seeing Spottom Got him at my old job back in when I was living in Florida. I think it was in 2020. I remember seeing, was it 2020 or 2021? No, it was 2020. It was either 2021 or 2022. I saw him, like literally, where I was taking orders and such, right? Taking orders at Poya Tropical, right? And then when I came, because we had like this big pad where you can take, when you can like do mobile orders outside and it, you can, and it sends to the register so they can cash out and such there. When I, when I got to the next car and such, I literally, when I peeked through a little bit and such, as I'm taking the order, I saw his face. And I ain't gonna trip. It was kind of crazy that I even saw his face in the first time. Kind of crazy. But yeah, I saw him, but yeah, I saw him at my workplace. <laughs> so, hey. It's crazy that I even saw him, but like the time he got shot and arrested. If all that didn't happen, things could have been so much different for him. At one point, Lil Durk, whose own father is now behind bars after being snitched on, gave back 100k for a feature that he had already recorded and refused to let the track come out. For a lot of people, Durk's ruling further solidified what people thought about him. But although they think that the Chicago rapper was right on this occasion, his decision not to work with Spot on Gotham, but record a verse for Real Boston Richie, has been seen as a little hypocritical. For for those who don't know, Boston Richie is a Tallahassee rapper who has signed the Futures as Free Band's label, and he's had plenty of buzz in recent years. Despite only beginning to rap in 2021, Boston Richie's early tracks like Keep Dissing made an immediate splash. But before he could really build a major brand, his career was sent into a tailspin when news emerged that he cooperated with a 2013 police investigation, explaining his involvement with a stolen car alongside two conspirators. The reactions were as expected, so Richie tried to tell his side of the story. So we go to the TVD station, you know, I'm on some shit like, but I'm boy I really ain't know the car was stolen, this is my will. Yeah. So like the police like took that from as in saying like, Oh, me saying they was in the whip to me, they knew the car was the knowledge that's being stolen, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that was never the case for like. On top of denying that it caused a strain on he and Future's relationship, he also suggested that the publicity was actually helpful to his career. Shit, my, my number's up. I ain't gonna say all publicity, good publicity, but it's just like shit, it's just sometimes this is what it come with, you feel me? Like, yeah. nigga can't be no great if a nigga ain't never, if a nigga can't recall you going through a certain situation. Although he is right in the sense that things haven't really stalled and he's still getting a lot of attention. It still hasn't completely gone away, and this isn't even the only time he's been accused of snitching. So videos like this ultimately haven't helped. But then again, this one I'm trying to tell you, like, oh, thank you. He, he, he was like, but I know we know for a fact the reason we know they hang because Eddie, Eddie gave him his moment. Oh yeah, game, this nigga rat. This nigga his own. His own once this video did the rounds, he proclaimed that he threw the cops off the scent with false information, but not everyone is so eager to accept this story. And fans did him dirty in the comments. He's doing a promo run for his next album, The Damn. Boston Plea Party. I'm not messing not with the anyone. Boston Plea Party. 
playing off a Boston Tea Party. That's crazy. I'm not messing with anyone who talks to the police for a whole hour. I don't care what they say. I want a lawyer. I want a lawyer it takes way less than an hour. <laughs> I mean, hey. Who talks to police for a whole hour. While he's still doing pretty well, it's hard to imagine he wouldn't be doing a little better if these allegations weren't hanging over his head. In this sense, Richie received a favorable outcome. However, it's important to note that not everyone experiences such leniency. I mean, just look at what happened to Pop Hunter, oh, yeah. a Philly rapper who was among the first rappers to really pop off on TikTok. Oh yeah, pop if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it the, which one, which song was it? I can't remember. They're probably going to play it, bro. Hannah was off to a flying start with yeah, Corvette, Corvette. Yeah, that one. Corvette, Corvette. Hop, bro, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that damn thing on TikTok. That Corvette, Corvette. Hop, bro. That, bro. I ain't going to lie. Yes, I get it. It was catchy, but it was so freaking annoying to me. Shit. Like, and plus, I didn't even think of him like a like a gangster rapper or whatever and such but it was it was just that damn song was so sometimes i feel with tiktok they always ruins a good song for me ruin a good song for anybody and such because they even then you see people want to do challenges to that or dance challenges to that shit it just annoys to me but let's get it to really pop off on TikTok, Pop Hanna was off to a flying start with Corvette Corvette. Soon, I mean, hell, you got a little Uzi Vert on the remix entitled Adderall. But just when things looked to be going so well, news emerged that back when he was 14 years old, he talked to the cops after his friend was killed. Once the paperwork was issued, the Philly MC was basically disowned by the game that he was just entering. And try as he might to defend his actions as that of a scared child, it felt like nobody wanted to hear it. Man, I be wishing all the time that I never went through that shit, bro. Ain't bro, ain't no kid supposed to go through no shit like that, bro. I was a kid, bro. Ain't no kid supposed to go through no shit like that, bro. I seen some shit that a kid wasn't supposed to see. And then, bro, I gotta live with that. I, like, bro, that's gonna always be in my mind. I, bro, bro, I have to live with that shit. I don't even sleep, bro. Bro, I don't go to sleep at night, bro. I do not sleep, bro. Every time I close my eyes, bro, I see that shit happening over and over and over and over and over again, bro. I barely want to have fun, bro, even being a rapper, bro. After, bro, after shows and shit, bro, bro, like, I used to cry, bro. After every show, bro. Although a screenshot went around claiming that Uzi asked to be taken off the remix, Pop says that never happened, but that he still got completely ghosted by him. I started seeing a screenshot. Right. That it was Uzi saying to you like, yo, bro, I don't want to be on your tape no more. Please, could you take take me off your tape? Because like you're telling on people. Bro, let me explain something to you, right? Dude never said this shit, bro. He never, ever said that. So he never asked to be taken off your tape? Bro, that's some last messages right there, bro. He never said that, bro. Like, don't you think if he would have said some shit like that, it, like, it would have been in there? Since I wasn't saying any, like, since I wasn't saying anything about it. Why didn't you say nothing? Like, that, that's an easy like lie to disprove. That like shit said, was an though. indictment. I'm gonna be honest. When I when I saw that, I said, oh, shit. Like, Uzi's on the hottest song, and if he's asking not to have that song he on. He never it. said that, bro. Like, bro, he never said a word to me about that. Like, since that shit came out, bro, we ain't say nothing to each other. But still, bro, though, bro, at bro, the bro. end of the day, it's basically like this. If I know I'm not... If I know, if I know there's something that is wrong and it's a hundred percent BS, I don't give a damn what people would say afterwards and such. I'm speaking my truth. If I know I'm in the right about something and I ain't, and there's no BS with me and such, I know for a fact I'm straight up saying what's the truth, truth, and not let no BS narrative go out there and such. So, my guy, you should have, even if you know it's BS, still, say something. You should have said something. About that, like, since that shit came out, bro, we ain't say nothing to each other. While Pop Hanna had to lose a friend and then let go of his connection to Uzi, another of hip-hop's most infamous snitches didn't hesitate to turn into an informant on one of his own. And that was Big Mike. A longtime member of Oblock and brother of the infamous STL member Wooski, Big Mike caught a murder case when a young man named Malcolm Stuckey was shot at a party. According to reports, King Von had been at the event when things got tense, at which point he called Big Mike for backup. 
After the 19 year old was murdered, Mike and Vaughn were eventually brought in for questioning and knowing that there were so many witnesses at the party, Mike felt like he had no other option but to cooperate with law enforcement. Once I got presented with what was going on and what it was, I knew the best way for me to get up out there. Well, I didn't know. I thought the best way for me to get up out there shit was just telling my shit. Them niggas signed me first. Basically said one thing led to another shit. You know, did the COs or other inmates give you troubles? You know, no one. Who, me? Yeah. Tell you, ain't no nigga play with me. Intent on getting off as lightly as possible, Mike even offered to snitch on an additional killing just to help his case. Defendants asked if it would be helpful for him if he gave the detective information about the shooting and another murder. Despite his best efforts, Mike still received a hefty 28 year sentence, which likely came down to the fact that once it took time to take the stand, he refused to snitch on Vaughn. Although he was scheduled for nearly three decades of incarceration, Mike only ended up spending nine years in prison. But somehow, he's still telling on Vaughn in his press run since emerging from jail. Yeah, like we had a motive on why we was doing this. So you need to tell- Nah, nigga. Look, I'ma save my stuff for the end I'm about to say, but this is why I be saying that sometimes y'all so-called real niggas out there and such, y'all be the most fakest of all. Than some of the infants and such, cause you know what it is. Look, that's why you'll never. That's why to me, whether you call me a real nigga, whether you call me this and that and the third, hey, I'm just me being me. I'm. I never call my. I never say I'm a tough nigga. I never say I'm about that life or anything like that. No, you will never hear nothing like that from me. From people who know me, I just be doing. I be just chilling. I be with myself most of the times, and hey, if you want to, ch if I'm friends with you, I'm friends with you. If I'm not, then it's all it is what it is. But that's why you. So hey, it is what it is. And his press run since emerging from jail. Yeah, like we had a motive on why we was doing the shit we was doing. I would say he was no serial killer, but he will kill you. Where no one would deny that what Mike did was snitching, one artist who has benefited from the gray area over what is telling and Gunna, what isn't Yeah, the most recent Gunna. one. Just a couple of years ago, Gunna was unquestionably one of the most beloved figures in hip hop. Known for working with the biggest names in the A, Gunna's career reached his peak with 2022's DS4 going number one. However, he didn't have much time for a victory lap, as soon as he was jammed up in the Rico case against Young Thug and Y cell as the Fulton County DA attempted to portray them as a violent street gang. Suddenly locked up, no one thought Gunna would turn on his mentor and Thugga, although he did have previous offenses, such as the time he <laughs> appeared on CNN's Crime Stoppers as a teenager. Yeah, I remember seeing this, and he, didn't he like try to disclaim and say, nigga, that ain't me and all that. Nigga, that looks exactly like you. Who you know have that overbite? <laughs> Who you know have that overbite and such? Like, come on now, nigga. And look, I ain't trying to hit this on people with overbites, but come on now. He he said about how that's not him. Nigga, really? Really? <laughs> come on now. We ain't stupid. But it was clear that he had no intention of spending years behind bars. Immediately, his lawyers insisted he wasn't about that life, saying, There is no allegation that he committed any acts of violence. There is no allegation that he ever sold any drugs. There is no allegation that he ever committed any act relating to obstruction of justice or interfering with the administration of justice. Left with the option of staying in jail without bond or tasting freedom again, he chose to go for an Alfred plea. For those who aren't familiar with this term, it's basically a guilty plea in which a defendant maintains their innocence, but they admit that the prosecution's evidence would likely result in a guilty verdict if brought to trial. With that, Gunna was back outside and immediately, he tried to get ahead of those inevitable snitching allegations. Such as the time he said this to WSB TV in a statement after the news broke. While I have agreed to always be truthful, I want to make it perfectly clear that I have not made any statements, have not been interviewed, have not cooperated, have not agreed to testify or be a witness for or against any party in the case, and have absolutely no intention of being involved in the trial process in any way. My focus of YSL was entertainment. Rap artists who wrote and performed music that exaggerated and glorified urban life in the black community. Try as he might, not everyone was buying it and before long, longtime collaborators like Lil Baby and Lil Dirk had unfollowed him. Meanwhile, leadership of the label like YSL Mondo couldn't believe what he had done. Boy, you didn't supposed to do that, my brother. Even though if you, I didn't be talking about it. everybody who got common sense, everybody who's been in the streets, no, you did not, but you don't do no. Like, 
Based upon how angered people were by the idea that he betrayed Thugger, it really looked like there might be no way back for him. In fact, many OGs thought it was a wrap. The film in court came out and, you know, of course his lawyer wrote that. He didn't write that. His lawyer probably wrote that. But now in these days, when you got the camera, it just looked like, you know, they're going to say, you pushing please. <laughs> you yeah, pushing please. Because, I mean, in this business, if you turn into a rat, it's kind of like it's a rat's over. Yeah. Me, I would have rather sat a little longer because I was only in there for a year. I would have sat a little longer than coming out to, to what the internet do. Yeah, because I mean, that's just my opinion. But as bad as things looked for Gunna, he would eventually return to what he does best and went on to drop his album, A Gift and a Curse. Suddenly forced to stand on his own two feet without any guest verses, the record landed at number three and delivered some major hits like Fuck You Mean and Back to the Moon. Named Complex's number one album of the entire year, Gunna is now heading out on his bittersweet tour. As a result, he's become one of the only rappers ever to be accused of snitching and turn it into a victory lap. Through what happened to the YSL artist, we maybe see a change in the air for hip hop where consumers aren't caring quite as much about these allegations as they once were. But even then, Gunna's fate is an incredibly rare case rather than a norm. And as long as the streets play a role in hip hop, that'll probably always be how it goes. Hey man, shout out to the waster on this video and such. Make sure I give it a little like right there and such. But look. This is why this is my thoughts on this whole thing, right? Basically, like this, and this could be either way. Now, me personally, it's crazy, right? That you need to tell me because of a certain situation and such, right? But I, but like I said at the start of this, it's a stage where you're at where you're young and you're in the streets and such and then you live by that code not to snitch and all that and da 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 right? But if you live to a point where you're really successful in your life, right? You can take, you can go away from that street life shit, sign away, go away from that shit and focus on the thing, focus on the thing that's making you get some good money and such, some clean, good clean money. But surprisingly, especially when it comes to the hip hop and such, most people are not gonna think that way and such and think like just because if you rat on if you rat on somebody, that's it and all. But hey, I'm just saying. Sometimes if you not snip, all I'ma say is this: you need. This is just me. Now, am I saying I'm gonna snitch on nobody? Snitch on somebody? No. Cause one. It's not about if you're snitching and such, cause you, people get the people sometimes forget the definition of the word snitching and cooperating. Snitching means that if you're if you was in a gang, right, and you did something and you was down with it and such, but then when you backpedal off of it and you try to reduce your sentence when you know you're not supposed to be telling, okay, that right there, that's a hundred percent snitching, cause you folded. Even though I'm not condoning the action, right? But what I am saying is, if you know you did it, if you ain't gonna take a responsibility for your actions, and you just gonna straight up snitch, and just straight up sell out your partner like that and such, then A, I can see it like that. Then that's a hundred percent snitch. But on the other hand, what I'm thinking is, like I just said, sometimes with that whole no snitching or whatnot, I'm just saying, for me, I feel like with that, you're going to cause trauma on yourself, like mental trauma, because the fact is that you want to you wanna keep this image about how, oh, you you are OG, you don't snitch, you, you never tell. When nine times out of ten, nigga, even if you're not going to tell, do you know how much of your partners are going to tell on you too? So trust me, you keeping that, and plus, with you keeping that same tough image about this and that and the third, honestly, to me, it's not going to last. Really, it's not. So that's why you see now where most we're in an era where most people are not going to give a damn about if you was in the street life or not. That's how I look at it. Because right now we caring about you having bars in your music. We have making sure you have fun with your music and all that. That's what we're living in now. So, hey, that's how I look at it. But either way. Shout out to Lil Waste, a good video and such. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments below. And look, 
you let me know what's your take on this and such but it's been your boy homo ziggy signing out stay positive keep the vibes up i'm out